Hi guys, it's Dee and welcome to Dee's Yard. So today I'm super excited to share with you the project I've been working on, a new garden arbor. So if you've been following along with my journey of transforming my yard, then you may remember me mentioning in a garden tour last year that one change that needed to happen was adding a gate to this back fence for easier access to my back property. I'm gonna try my hand on a mini pumpkin and watermelon patch this year, which will require an entry from the back rather than using the front gate every time. Instead of just building a gate and redoing our fence, I wanted to add something vertical and not just create a structure, but to incorporate it into the garden. And what better way than to grow two grapevines on either side of the arbor and let the fruit hang from the top pergola until ready to harvest. All the supplies used for this project will be listed in the description box down below. To give you a quick idea of how the build was formed, I drafted a rough sketch of how I wanted the arbor to look. Now the size of this arbor is constructed to exactly what I need, but it can be modified to be smaller or even larger if desired and customized to your own needs. The original plan was to dig a hole for each post with a 18 inch diameter and 50 inches deep to allow four foot of the post and two inches of gravel at the bottom, but we didn't end up using any gravel. The lumber used was two 12 foot six by six posts on either side, creating eight feet of posts above the soil line. Two 12 foot two by eight boards for both the front and rear headers, one 12 foot two by six board, which is used for what I'm calling cross beams, which are cut into four beams, three feet each. Two 16 foot two by fours. This is used for the 10 rafters cut evenly to three feet each. After I finalized the dimensions, I marked with spray paint where to dig the holes for my six by six post. I'm just using a shovel to dig, but you can also use a post hole digger tool or an auger. The principles are generally the same for setting any post. Dig the hole three times wider than the post, in this case, 18 inches wide. Depthwise, one third to one half the height of the above ground post needs to be buried. My goal is to have eight feet above ground, so I'm digging four feet. And because I'm adding a gate and will be growing grapevines up the structure, I'll be using quite a bit of cement also. The stain I use for the arbor is by Bear, and it's a semi-transparent in the color chocolate. Again, I'll make sure to list all the supplies down below. I opted to stain all the lumber used for this project prior to assembly, but feel free to forego until after installation or not at all. I find it easier to stain on sawhorses versus on top of a ladder. I just stain as I go, and the two 12 foot six by six posts were first on the to-do list. Next is time to set the posts, and I definitely needed some help with this as the posts are very heavy. Once I got them in the hole, I used multiple boards to plumb and brace the post. It does take some patience to assure both posts are perfectly level and plumb, or perfectly vertical in both directions. Now it's time to add the quick cream, and I chose to pre-mix with water in my garden cart prior to adding, but you can mix everything directly in the hole if desired. When adding the quick cream, be careful not to nudge the post out of position. I ended up using about seven bags of the high strength concrete mix per hole, but I'd recommend the fast setting concrete mix if you can find it. Our local hardware store was out. Now I just let the cement set and cure. I also left an inch or two at the top to backfill with my native soil. Now it's time to start cutting and preparing all the wood pieces needed. Both 16 foot two by fours were first stained and dried prior to cutting. To create the 10 rafters used on top of the structure to construct a mini pergola for my grapevines, both 16 foot two by fours are cut evenly into five three foot rafters each for a total of 10. I then set my miter saw at 45 degrees and cut an angle at each end of the rafters.
They are then sanded to round out the edges. Now it's time to start working on the four cross beams and two headers of the arbor. First I sanded any markings or stamps on the boards and then I stained them. Next, both front and rear headers, which are the two 12-foot, two by eight boards are cut. For aesthetic purposes, each end is cut at a 60 degree angle, one and a half inches from the top. My miter saw only cuts up to 45 degree angles, so I had to use a handheld circular saw for this cut. Then I sand it to round out the edges. For the cross beams that will hold up the two headers, I took the 12 foot two by six board and cut it into four equal pieces that are three feet each. Then just like the headers, each cross beam is cut at a 60 degree angle, one and a half inches from the top. They are all sanded to run off the edges. Then I use a jigsaw to create two inch notches on both the front and rear headers. When I was looking at pergolas and arbors to get inspiration, I was attracted to designs where the beams and rafters were notched together. This added step, in my opinion, creates a nice finished look. Each notch is spaced about 11 and a quarter inches apart. If you do not have a jigsaw, you can also use a circular saw and a chisel. Then I finished the headers again with stain. I'm not sure where my footage went, but the cross beams were also given two, two inch notches to fit the headers into. So just for a quick recap, I ended up with four cross beams. One and a half inches from the top, I cut a 60 degree angle, and then used the bottom of the angle cut as a tool where to start the two inch notch. I also have a front header and a rear header. Also cut one and a half inches from the top with a 60 degree angle and 10 two inch notches. And then a total of 10 rafters. And they all have a 45 degree angle cut at each end. Before assembly, I used some black spray paint that I just had lying around to paint the four deck joist high and eight angle brackets black, of course, for aesthetic purposes. And now it's finally time for assembly. The deck joist ties are installed, so each cross beam's top is flush with the top of the six by six post and then leveled. Before screwing in the cross beams, I did ensure all the notches lined up with a header. Once leveled, I clamped the cross beam to the six x six post and drilled it in. I use a Simpson Strong Tie one inch hex head washer and a three and a half structural wood screw for the middle accent. Next, I placed both headers in their proper location and used a few rafters to ensure everything lined up appropriately. I then secured the headers to the cross beams with the angle bracket. For the 10 rafters on top, first I drilled pilot holes to ensure the wood didn't crack and then drill them into the headers.
After the arbor was finished, it was time to complete the area and look with a new fence and gate to match, and of course some extra decor, solar lanterns. left to do is order the grapes that I want and that do great in my area and here in the south a muscadine grape is native. I have settled on a Triumph muscadine grape from fastgrowingtrees.com to have shipped right to my door so please stay tuned for that video. I will be planting two grape vines on either side of the arbor. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. I know I'm super excited about having this back gate to access my back property. Um, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!